In this video, we're going to look at independent random variables. Now remember, when we were talking about probability, if we had two events, A and B, and we said that those two events were independent, we had this property that the probability of A intersect B was equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now remember that the intersect means AND. Now if we have two random variables, X and Y, and we say that those two random variables are independent, then this property is true. Remember for discrete random variables, okay, and again here we're talking about discrete random variables. For a discrete random variable, we have this probability, probability of that our random variable x will be equal to little x sub i, and y will be equal to little y sub j. Now remember this is, this means, a, the comma there means and, we can also think of that as intersection. Now, so if these two are independent random variables, then we can say that this is equal to the probability that x is equal to little x sub i times the probability that y is equal to little y sub j. Now, if you remember also when we were talking about individual random variables, that this is equal to our distribution function for a discrete random variable, our distribution function for x and then this will be our distribution function for y and so we'll have that that will be equal to f of x sub i times g y sub j our two distribution functions for x and y and of course this was originally defined as our joint distribution function for a discrete random variable so what are, what are we saying here then if x and y are independent random variables then this will be true for its distribution function, its joint distribution function. Uh, the distribution function at x of x sub i and y sub j will be equal to the individual marginal functions multiplied f of x sub i times g y sub j. All right, so that's what we mean by independence in, um, for random variables. So let's look at an example we have a joint distribution function for x and y that's given here in the blue and the question is is are x and y independent random variables alright so we, we just said that in order for the random variables to be independent the di joint distribution function has to be equal to the multiplication of the two marginal functions so let's first thing that we have to do then is find the marginal distribution functions so that means we need to find f of x sub i and g y sub j. Now remember how we, how we do that is for x, the function x, we sum over the y values. So we have our two x values, 0 and 1. And so we're going to sum this direction, the row for x. We have 0.1 plus 0.3 gives us 0.4. And for x equal to 1, we have 0.5 and 0.1, so we get 0.6. So here's our marginal distribution function for x. And for y, we sum the columns. So we have 0.1 plus 0.5 equals 0.6, and 0.3 plus 0.1 equals 0.4. So we've got 0.6 and 0.4 <coughs> for g of y sub i. Now what has to be true in order for this to be independent? Well, for each one of these individual items, let's say for x equals 0 and y equals 0, we've got 0.1. That value has to be equal to our distribution function for x at 0 times our distribution function of y for y at, uh, equal to 0. So f of 0 and g of 0. And let's take a look if that's true. We have point our function for, let's start with f, our function for f is 0.4 and our function for y is 0.6. If we multiply those together we should get 0.1 and um, we actually get 0.24. I've got that down here, 0.4 times 0.6 equals 0.24. That's not equal to the 0.1 that we want. And at that point we can just stop. We don't have to do any more because we know that the two random variables are not independent, not independent. Now, if we, if that was true, what would we have to do? We'd have to actually go through all of the values and determine if they're 
equal to each other. So we'd have to look at h of 0, 1 is equal to f of 0, g of 1, and so on. We'd have to go through all of these values to see if they're true. All right, so it's not independent, so we can stop. All right, so let's look at another example. The joint distribution function, again, is given down here. We've got x and y in our function h of x of y. And again, we're asking, are they independent? So we've got y can be 1, 2, 3, and x can be 2 or 3. All right, so again, we need to find f of x and g of y. So we sum up the rows to get our f of x. And again, we get point, or in this case, we get 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.4. And our g function, we sum up the columns to get, here we got 0. 0.1, 0. 0.7, and 0. 0.2 for g. Now remember, we have to check all the values to see if, they're, if this is true, that h of x sub i, y of j is equal to f of x sub i, g, y of j. And so let's look at it, see if it's true. <clears throat> so let's look at the first, we have to look at the first spot, and we have 0.1 and 0.6. Multiply those together, we get 0 0.06. Okay, that one checks. So now we got to go through all of these. For 2, x equal to 2, and y equal to 2, we've got 0 0.42, and we've got 0 0.7 and 0 0.6, which does equal to 0 0.42, so that checks. For 2 and 3, we've got 0.12, and we uh, for x we've got 0.6 and 0.2, which gives us 0.12. All right, so we get here 0.1 and 0.4 gives us 0.04, 0.7 and 0.4 does give us 0.28, and 0.2 and 0.4 does give us 0.08. So it worked for all of them. So since the function h is equal to the multiplication of our two marginal functions for every combination of our x values and y values. We can therefore say that x and y are independent random variables. Okay. Now, there are some other properties that are possible when we have two random variables uh, being independent. Now, one of them is that the expected value of x times y will be equal to the expected value of x times the expected value of y, or just mu x times mu y. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to prove any of these, but uh, we'll just state them as properties at this point. So we can show that this is true. So if they're independent, the expected value of the multiplication of x and y is just equal to the multiplication of the expected values of x and y. Now for the variance, of the addition of two random variables x and y. You might think that this would be true normally, but it's actually not. Uh, but for independent random variables, the variance of x plus y will be equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y. In general, this is not true. Uh, for general random variables, it's not true. But for independent random variables, that will be equal, uh, that will be true. Now, if you remember our covariance, I should probably should have written it down. Our covariance has is equal to the expected value of x times y minus mu x times mu y. Well, for independent random variables, mu uh, ex the expected value of x times y is equal to mu x times mu y, and therefore, when you subtract them, you get zero. And so, for independent random variables, our covariance is equal to zero. And therefore, since the covariance is equal to zero, our correlation coefficient will also be equal to zero. Now that kind of makes sense in just a logical manner. If two in, uh, random variables or two things are independent of each other, what is their correlation? Essentially, we're looking at correlation here. What's the correlation between them? How much does one tell us about the other? Well, if they're completely independent, it seems kind of logical that the correlation between those two things will be equal to zero.